Alright, top of the morning, afternoon, night, whenever. Call me crazy, but I think today is Tuesday, October 19th. Yes, it is, or at least when this will be released. Um, I did it again. I did um, <clears throat> another solo solo scene solo uh concert um experience concert going thing went to a concert by myself all my friends are um anti-vaxxers or they um yeah i don't know but i went to a concert Concerto last night. It was um, Pine Grove, which is like a kind of like a sad alternative fucking country music. Really mixed uh, mixed bag of genres here, but yeah, this uh, one uh, one cunt I met from. Um, Bumble, she showed me it. So, yeah, kind of got me hooked. So I decided to go to this here uh, concert, a live uh, concert uh, show. And, yeah, it was a pretty good time. But fucking, so yesterday, well, yeah, and then before this one, I went to the Phoebe Bridgers concert at fucking... At pack that was a pretty good time but um so yeah i went to this concert yesterday pine grove and uh day started off well been working fucking 7 a.m to 4 p.m shifts at work and you know it's just a fucking hour longer than what um than what I normally work, but that shit, I feel like it fucking adds up, because I am tired as fuck right now, and, um, yeah, it just sucks fucking cock, but, uh, here we are, yeah, seven to, yeah, I, I don't even know what the fuck my manager's thinking, but either way, um, yeah, so I worked seven to four yesterday, and I did a string of uh, three in a row, seven to four is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And first day was fine. Monday's fine. I do my shift, get out at four. It's all kosher, no fucking, um, not really tired. Still got some energy when I get out fucking Tuesday dragging ass a little bit, but then fucking yesterday I'm sniffling like I got fucking COVID or something. I don't fucking know. The weather's changing, so that's probably why I'm sniffling a little bit. Mm, either that or uh, herpes, but yeah. So Monday and Tuesday was fine. Then yesterday at fucking work, 7 to 4. By the time about fucking 3.30 rolled around, I was just getting fucking that delirious amount of fucking tiredness in your body where you just start saying shit and you don't give a fuck about anything. Start fucking, I don't even know. It's just like I'm not even concerned about shit. The only thing I can say to people is, Jesus, I'm so fucking tired. I don't want to be here right now. And my manager, he's usually fucking driving us to the goddamn bone. She was like, yeah, you could fucking leave five minutes early. Sure, yeah, treat yourself, which was, it was very gracious of her to do that, I guess. But, yeah, she was like, geez, you look fucking uh, very tired. And <laughs> I was. Little did she know, I was. So, um, but... I got out of work at fucking, yeah, like fucking 3.55 as opposed to 4. And uh, went home, went straight home. Had some fucking um, 
corned beef and cabbage. Jesus Christ, that's just the best fucking stuff ever. And then I fucking reheat it this morning on the stove, kind of like a fucking, not ghetto, ghetto corned beef hash, I guess. Homemade corned beef hash on my Irish shit. Dago goes Irish, but, um, yeah, so I ate that after I got out of work, and I fucking tried to rip a little fucking nap, well, actually, the sleep that I had, you know, from fucking Tuesday to Wednesday morning, not the best sleep, I was fucking super tired from the day before, so I ended up going to sleep at, like, fucking 6.30 p.m. flat, and then I ended up waking up at fucking midnight, you know how it fucking goes when you, uh, you I don't even know. Like, you get... You're so tired. And, um... I don't even know. It's, you're just so tired, so you go to bed super early. But it ends up just being a long nap. And then you're stuck in uh, limbo at, like, midnight to fucking 2 a.m. Just up, fucking itching your neck. And then, um... And then it ends up working like an inverse with your fucking sleep, because then I woke up Wednesday tired, so, uh, long story short, I was fucking very, very tired Wednesday, so then I came home from work on Wednesday, like I said, I had corned beef and hash, or corned beef and cabbage, uh, corned beef and cabbage, um, then I decided to take a fucking nap, because I knew it would be a pretty long night, I'm going to this concert, as I said. So I ended up fucking ripping a nap from like 4.30 till 5.45 p.m. Show starts at um, 7. And yeah, so I get my fucking happy fat ass out of bed at fucking probably 5.50 p.m. Get my goddamn... Put my overalls and my fucking straw hat on. Get out the door. Um, this concert was at uh, Town Ballroom, and I was not, I'm not super confident or familiar with the area. Kind of like downtown, Chippewa-ish area. So I figured parking was going to be a, be a pain in the ass. So I ended up stopping at 7-Eleven just to grab a bunch more cash just in case I had to um, fucking fork over my, my soul for a parking spot, but um, I ended up going it was actually really convenient, so the fucking town ballroom's on Main Street, and then one street behind Main Street in Buffalo is uh, Washington. At Washington and Chippewa, there was a fucking uh, fucking what was it? It was exactly what I was looking for. A fucking big, fat-ass fucking parking lot. And it was only like fucking three bucks for the whole night. Probably just because it was a weekday night. But, yeah, I thought it was going to be a bigger deal than it was. As I do with uh, most things. <laughs> um, but, yeah, fucking three bucks. Gave the fucking crackhead dude who was working the fucking parking booth a $2 tip. So we could fucking get his fix tonight. Or that night, rather. And yeah, fucking Dan Rather. No, it was fucking uh, perfect. And uh, in the parking lot, you know, you see all the fucking... All the people, all the hipsters, indie fucking douches in the parking lot. So that's how I knew that I was close to the eye of the storm. So... Yeah, park in this parking lot. I don't got to worry about somebody fucking... It's all fenced in and shit, so I don't got to worry about anybody putting the car up on fucking cinder blocks and fucking stealing my fucking uh, 22s off the whip. But, um, yeah, so it was super close to the fucking venue, so it was perfect. And then I just walk over. It was beautiful. I just had a long sleeve fucking T-shirt on. My fucking Daisy Dukes, and, um, yeah, it was just fucking beautiful weather, so then I fucking, when I got there at, like, 6 fucking 35, probably, and the doors were at 7, so I had to fucking line up, 
uh, line looked longer than it um, appeared, the amount of people that were actually in line, in line skating. But, um, um, yeah, so there wasn't that many folks in line. But, like I said, going there by my lonesome, and then I'm trying not to fucking... Uh, Try not to look at my phone. I don't know why, but I just fucking hate just standing there looking at my phone. But yeah, it's a cool area. They got the little fucking train that goes underneath the fucking... Goes like underground right out front of Town Ballroom. Really cool. Tickets were cheap. Only like 30... They were like 25 $26. And then usually with concert tickets it's like a fucking million dollars in like fees and all that bullshit but there was only like 200 or two dollars and uh 25 cents in like handling fees or well there's not really any fucking handling but i guess i wasn't complaining because it wasn't fucking 25 dollars in fees but yeah it only ended up coming out to like fucking 33 bucks and just being honest i don't fucking i I still only know probably <laughs> probably fucking two or three of their songs soaking wet, but I don't know. I just want I just like to just cool to see people, I guess, rather than because obviously I don't know every single one of their songs, but just cool to fucking see live music again. Kind of groovy, but yeah, so I'm waiting my fucking dumbass in line, staring at the sky. And there's the dude fucking. They're like checking uh, vaccine passports and shit. And I'm just like, hey, how's your day going? He's like, yeah, it's been good. Fucking there hasn't been too many issues with like people having their vaccine and shit. But it's like a fucking it says where you purchase the tickets that you need to have your fucking uh, vaccine passport or whatever, whatever other bullshit you need to have vaccine passport your id all that bullshit uh. so apparently that's fucking still an issue for some people but i thought it was uh pretty much across the board that um most events and things you're gonna need to have your little vax pass libtard vax pass <laughs> but um yeah and he seemed like a he seemed like an older fucking racist gentleman, but he was understanding, I guess, of the folks who didn't have the Vax Pass, but he was, um, yeah, he was cool. He's like some older, like, those are like the only people that work at concert venues. This is just a revelation that I just had, because at Art Park, it's all like 50-year-old, white, Republicanish looking folks, like the mask that fucking goes around your neck and like your whole head it's like a, a sock without that doesn't like come to a close they just like wrap a sock over their head or something or the gator masks whatever the fuck they're called just seems super seems like a seems like a racist piece of apparel and they always have like american flags on them for some reason but yeah so he was he was um he was checking the vax passes and shit so which is convenient because then they just gave you the wristband that shows that I'm a vaccinated fucking retard, libtard person. And uh, then they just had to check your uh, tickets at the fucking when you got in. And of course, they got to pat you down at the door to make sure you don't fucking, you don't got a fucking gun on you or something. Because somebody's going to bring a gun to a fucking shitty indie, like emo country concert. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got in, and like I said, the line seemed long, but um, upon entering the uh, the venue, not that many folks near the stage. So I ended up getting right against the uh, barrier to the left, stage right. But, um, yeah, I was right up against the barrier, so probably fucking less than 20 feet away from the main lead singer microphone spot so that was nice well right when i got in i was like fuck i better take a piss and like get like a, a cup of water or something because once i get this spot i'm not going to be able to fucking turn around because it's going to be 
it's going to be gone for sure. So, yeah, doors were at 7. I got in. I walked up. It was apparent that I'd be able to get, like, front row right against the barrier. So then I doubled back, took a piss, fucking jerked off in the bathroom, got a glass of water. There was one of those fucking dudes that um, always hangs out in the bathrooms. You've seen him before at, like, at like Boston Pizza. <laughs> like, the dude who, like, they always appear to be, like, homeless, but they're fucking... He might have been. I don't know if he was fucking contracted by the venue or if he was just fucking free birding uh, freelancing the fucking gig but they had like an automatic fucking paper towel paper paper towel dispenser and he was just like ripping them off and just like handing it to people and uh yeah he was just in brutal shape he looked like he just got fucking ran over a couple of times he just looked like shit but nonetheless he fucking wiped my ass for me and i fucking and then he uh, patted me on the patted me on the head and sent me back out to the concert no but he he wasn't it's like all they do is just hand you they just the little fucking automatic paper towel and fucking hand you the paper towels that's all they're doing they don't have like they always have like cologne for some reason or at least at boston pizza they would always have cologne i don't know what the fuck that was um, everybody there is fucking blackout drunk at fucking Boston Pizza anyways and like it fucking matters everybody just goes there to fucking fight and fucking I don't even know but yeah good place Boston Pizza Jesus Christ R.I.P. R.I.P. Canada but yeah so I fucking yeah took a piss took a shit got my got my cup of water so then I'm fucking married to the spot uh Cause I have, I'm out right up against the barrier, front, front and center, like I said, or front and left, like I said. So I gotta fucking uh, stretch out this here fucking cup of water for as long as the show is, and I'm fucking, and I'm fucking thirsty, daddy. No, I was just fucking, you know, taking little little bird bird feeder sips of it just to try to make it last, which it did for the most part. And doors were at seven. And it, and once again, not really trying to just sit there and be the asshole just sitting on my phone, but the fuck else was I going to do? Um, so yeah, I got in at 7 p.m. And the first act didn't start until 8. And yeah, and then the thing with being on your phone is you're just looking at the clock and you're just like, fuck. And especially when I'm fucking tired as I was, just a very... Uh, impatient little whore I am when I'm fucking tired just a little pissy little fucking bitch but <laughs> but yeah so waited there from fucking 7 till 8 p.m. Um, I had this spot like I said up front in the first hour not that many people so I was like oh I could have probably like you know maybe sat back got a place with like a chair to just fucking let my fucking back cool off for a little bit because I had been standing for basically fucking 14 hours straight at this point. But, um, yeah, right after the first act, it really packed in, so I would have been fucked. So I'm glad that I uh, stood my ground, stand your stand your ground law, whatever the fuck that bullshit is. But, um, yeah, so the first act, they were called fucking Skull Crusher or Skull Fucker or something. And it's like I get like the ironic name for the for the band, but it's just fucking stupid at this point because that was like a thing, like purposely not trying to be cool, but appropriating like dad, boomer, like cool dad, fucking um, like ram truck fucking ideologies like being a skull crusher like you could see that as like a fucking it's like a bumper sticker or something but so they're called fucking skull crusher skull fucker and um just these two fucking emaciated uh weirdo motherfuckers and the one lady she looks like she's wearing like a black like fucking it's not a dress but it's like 
one of those like it's like a dress but it's really skinny and it goes down to like her ankle so she kind of look like a, a worm or something and she had on like these shitty like new balance shoes on not like the fucking air monarch ones but like one step above those which it's like if you're gonna wear like a dress don't don't fucking don't do that just look like shit it looked like you just got fucking done hiking or something but then you also have a dress on for some reason it was just a really odd combination of uh clothing but uh i digress and then their their music was fucking horrible <laughs> it's just two fucking uh two douchebags with um acoustic guitars which um on paper doesn't sound fucking horrible but um yeah it it was <laughs> it was horrible it was not very good it's just um just really soft vocals which when done right can be um entertaining and uh depressing and uh gay but this was just not not uh not good at all and the crowd the crowd was not fucking digging it and it would have been nice if like the lead singer was how so it was a lead singer woman and then um a backup guitarist fucking simp incel on the other acoustic guitar um yeah and she was just really strange looking she kind of looked like i don't even know what she looked like she looked like a character from from uh what is it monsters inc one of the fucking really skinny like wormy characters and yeah it was kind of just stereotypical indie like mumbling over acoustic guitar which it would have been nice if i could fucking hear her voice but so yeah they played like the first two songs no they played like one song and people they had their attention then <laughs> and then you just started hearing it's just like the rumbling of people just talking and i fucking i felt bad for these fucking idiots because they were you know this is their fucking life but that uh buffalo crowd was really not digging what the fuck or digging what they were putting down and i wasn't either it was horrible but, um, yeah, so they were playing their set, and then progressively as they went on, they probably only did five songs, but as it went on song after song, like the background noise of just people talking just got louder. Everybody just kind of disregarded them. Um, yeah, and then so they were like, okay, we only got two songs left. And then everybody's like, woo, get them the fuck out of here, woo. I was fucking excited. I was like, Jesus Christ, let's get this over with. But, um, yeah, so they said they had two songs, and then they played one more song, and then they just looked at each other, and they were like, okay, that's all we have for tonight. So they fucking, because everybody was just talking at this point, fucking screaming. People were, like, heck, heckling them. Somebody's like, make me, make me cry at these fucking people, these, like, indie douchebag acoustic guitar people, which I guess I am to some extent, indie guitar douchebag, but... Yeah, so they were like, "Okay, good night," <laughs> and cut their cut their set short. Which I kind of had a feeling that they were gonna do that because nobody gave a fuck about what they were doing. I sure as hell didn't. It didn't even seem like they did. Like the music, I don't know how you play acoustic guitar and you can't hear the vocal cuts like a softer fucking instrument. So what the fuck are you doing? But so that was over. I'm glad it was over because I wanted to fucking kill myself. And um. Yeah, I wanted to go fucking hang out with the homeless dude who was giving out fucking paper towels in the fucking bathroom. Um, but yeah, it's just horrible, not good music. And um, yeah, Skull Crusher, check him out if you if you would like. <laughs> um, and then they had a second act on, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Not really anything to mention that was stand out bad, stand out good. They started off with like some fucking. I thought it was going to be like some noisy experimental bullshit. Then I would have really fucking started screaming or fucking, I don't even know. But um, yeah, so that wasn't bad. And then fucking, oh yeah. But before even the fucking uh, first shitty uh, set that made my ears bleed and made me want to die, it was, um, or there was just these two girls fucking behind me, like six feet behind me or something. And it's, it was quiet at first. You know how they play like music and shit in the venue before the uh, act goes on. 
So they were just sitting there, and then um, I'm just standing there fucking by myself like a loser, so obviously I'm fucking just listening into whatever fucking people are talking about. And <laughs> um, so two girls behind me, and then th this dude, like, approaches them like, hey, like, fucking... My friends, like, flaked on me. You mind if I, like, hang out with you guys? <laughs> and it just made the fucking hairs on my neck just fucking stand up. It was just so cringy, this dude. He was fucking weird. He had fucking a worse head of hair than I did. Um, Just as short as I am. It was just fucking, just a tough fucking sight of a person. And, you know, these girls were, you know, cute, cute gals. Hot gals, and then he, this fucking loser, simp fucking motherfucker comes up to him. And it's just like, oh my god. That's why whenever I fucking, I don't want to fucking intrude on people, so I'd rather just wait if somebody will fucking talk to me or something, which they never do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't want to be that fucking asshole. Um, hey, uh, I'm here by myself like a fucking loser. Uh, you wanna, can I just, like, hang out with you guys? Especially if it's, like, girls, too, because obviously they don't want to fucking be around you, you fucking weirdo. But, yeah, that was fucking horrible. It, it really made me wince in real time as I heard it happen. And I think one of the girls, everybody had masks on. I think it was a girl that I went to college with, too, and I was going to turn around and say hi, but I and I was, like, 80% sure, but I didn't want to have that off chance and then just turn around to them, hey, uh, is that you, Sarah, <laughs> from college? And then her just look at me, and then I'm like, okay. And then I just do a 180 and just back into my spot fucking five feet in front of them. So I didn't want to fucking risk that. But she probably would have appreciated it because she had that fucking weird motherfucker that, <laughs> that came up to them. And... um yeah, so I was just waiting for the fucking show to start, and I would just periodically just turn around and, and look around at the venue. It was a lot smaller. Town Ballroom's a lot smaller than it looks in pictures. But, um, so like I said, it was really sparse the first hour, but then it pretty much packed in, and that fucking weirdo, he was still standing next to the two girls, and they were kind of doing their own thing, talking to each other, not really including him. <laughs> at first they were sitting off to the right the uh the women and then the gentleman approached them and made hey can i like sit with you guys can i bunk up with you guys my friends fucking bailed on me which i mean is obviously a fucking lie he's just like a college course that like teaches you how to fucking create small talk with you like oh what shows are you binge watching at the moment um but yeah so they were over sitting down and then they ended up moving and then he like followed them around which is fucking weird jesus christ i'm glad i don't have a uh, vagina mm. but um um what was i gonna say uh buck angel but so yeah so he was like hanging out with these two girls and <laughs> now i'm just like turning around every fucking uh you know, 10 minutes or so, and they're kind of talking to each other and, like, showing each other things, like, on the, each other's phones, just fucking conversing, showing each other videos or whatever the fuck they're doing. And I see the dude, he's just, like, standing there, um, not close enough to look like he's in their group, but, like, a foot out of that, like, comfort zone where you see people standing together and you think that, okay, they came here together. But he was, like, outside of that bubble, maybe a foot, and he's, like peering over like looking at the girls phones as they're showing each other things and he's like just like looking over their shoulder it was fucking really weird it was really fucking weird i i understand why um it's just really creepy i understand why you know it's tough being a fucking lady when you got fucking people with bad hairlines fucking looking over your shoulder um but yeah it was just really fucking weird and, um, yeah, so then Pine Grove came on. They, uh, well, actually, before the show, they introduced, or they had India Walton come out and speak, which was really cool. Uh, she's a lot shorter. I, I don't know why I pictured her to be tall for some reason, but she's, like, she's about four and a half feet tall. Cute little gal. Um, 
But yeah, and then she introduced Pine Grove, and then they were all right. Um, I don't like how each one of them, they would, each like individual band member, they would be wearing all of one color. So it'd be like a green shirt, green pants, and green shoes, and the other one would be wearing red shoes, red pants. It, it reminded me of like fucking, not Blue's Clues, but whatever the fuck that other show is that I can't fucking, the, the Wiggles, is it the fucking Wiggles? I don't fucking know if it's the Wiggles or not, but one of the fucking shows that, um, I don't know, where they just all wear the same fucking color. Um, but yeah, that was fucking weird. I don't know if, I guess the, the fucking singer had some kind of allegations or fucking sexual misconduct allegations, so I don't know if he's trying to play a fucking clean image to the to the good folks. But yeah, there was some kind of article that came out about the lead singer a couple of years ago that I remembered, but then I Googled and I couldn't fucking find it, so I don't know if he just got it wiped out. But either way, they were dressed up like the fucking Wiggles in all red or blue or orange fucking outfits, trying to change up their uh, image. <laughs> and, um, yeah, good set. All I really wanted to hear was fucking old friend, old friends, sorry, old friends, and then I could fucking die happy, and that was the um, second to last closure closer closure closer song it was uh old friends and then aphasia which i ended up knowing aphasia kind of um just in the back of my head i had heard it before couldn't have like pointed out the name or anything but yeah good set um by the time i was done my fucking felt like the same exact way that i felt at the fucking phoebe bridgers concert just a, like a folding chair in my back i could just fucking and i felt like one of those old people that just walks around just at a fucking 90 degree angle felt like a fucking piece of shit um uh walked out of the venue back to my fucking the vehicle in the parking lot it wasn't up on cinder blocks which was fucking nice um yeah and then i fucking you know got into the car and, uh, you know, you got to fucking hunch, hunch a little bit to get in your vehicle. My fucking back was just fucked. I'd been uh, pretty much up besides my nap since fucking four o'clock that, that morning and hadn't fucking, um, and slept like shit, but, <laughs> but yeah, the show ended up running from, so I was there since six thirty. show got out at about fucking, oh, when did it get out? Maybe about 1130. So 630, 730, 830, 930, 1030, 11. So almost fucking like a six hour affair. And it was only fucking 30 bucks. So I guess I got my money's worth, even though my back I feel like a fucking paraplegic fucking quadriplegic motherfucker. But yeah, it was a fucking, uh, it was a good time. Always love a plan, no matter what. That's my new fucking move, is just going to concerts by myself and being that fucking creepy guy in the corner. Except I don't fucking press myself on uh, groups of friends that are already existing. Hey, uh, my friends ditched me, <laughs> and I fucking... Can I tag along with you guys? Who the fuck does that? Who has the balls to do that? Or it's just, just fucking weird. I could never imagine trying to fucking do that and just, like, insert yourself, but insert yourself into someone's fucking ass but um yeah it was good i ended up getting home at fucking midnight uh fucking took a shower fucking jerked off fucking praised allah um yeah and ended up then i woke up today at fucking five to my alarm five thirty six then i just got up at six so i'm running on um not even a piss poor uh, six hours of sleep, but I'm fucking still kicking, uh, doing a fucking pod. Um, I had a bunch of other things to talk about, but uh, my fucking Pine Grove fucking an anecdote here ended up running pretty much to my time. Um, yeah, there's fucking, I heard, it sounds like there's a fucking squirrel in the walls in my house. And then, I don't know, I could be, it might have been just birds on the side of the house, but, uh, yeah, there's probably a squirrel that lives in my house, and then there's fucking birds that are, definitely have a nest inside of my, uh, window AC unit, so that's fucking great. 
so I'm probably going to get a hose and try and fucking drown them. <laughs> so that's what I think I might do now, is go fight with the fucking birds that are trying to live in my house and the fucking squirrels. So I believe this was episode 60 of uh, uh, the Gardon Pals.